Hello everyone, today is August the 28th, 2016. Um, this article taken from the website WND titled New Hitch and Obama's Plan to Redefine quote the word sex. I need to preface this video by saying that um, I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone. Um, my posting of this video is for the purpose of speaking out against this on behalf of children, adults who are of legal age and um, maturity um, are certainly more free thinkers and able to make decisions for themselves more so than children. And there seems to be, no there is, it's not seems to be, there is in this country and all over the world in my opinion a war on children. I see it in my own job, I see it in my community, and um, as much as I would like to say that I speak out on behalf of children, I don't speak out as much as I should and I, and I would like to. But um, however, in some ways that's changing, and I hope to make a video a little bit later um, on about something else that, that's going on that I just need to collect some more data on to be able to comfortably post a video on. A video on. So I'm going to share this article with you. It's a little, not real long, but I'm going to read it and then um, post it up as soon as I can. So here it goes. New Hitch and Obama's Plan to Redefine Sex. How many people back in 2008 envisioned that Barack Obama's fundamental transformation of America including included a change of the meaning of the word sex. Probably a few, but many didn't, and now his agenda is running into headwinds yet with yet another lawsuit against his administration. The newest lawsuit is being brought by the Beckett Fund on behalf of Texas, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Kansas, Kentucky. Governor Matthew Belvin, the Franciscan Alliance, Specialty Physicians of, of Illinois, and the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. It challenges a new Department of Health and Human Services regulation that changes the meaning of the word sex. Previous lawsuits have challenged an Obama order to public schools to allow children to use gender-specific facilities according to their gender, quote, identity, rather than their biological sex. He also ordered federal facilities to do the same. The new lawsuit charges the Department of Health and Human Services is attempting to impose these dramatic new requirements by redefining a single word used in the Affordable Care Act, sex. We're not talking about intercourse, we're talking about whether a person is male or female. For decades, across multiple federal statutes, Congress has consistently used the term sex to refer to an individual's status as male or female as determined by a person's biological sex at birth, the complaint says. But in his regulation, HHS redefined sex to include an individual's internal sense of gender, which may be male, female, neither, or a combination of male and female, and which may be different from an individual's sex assigned at birth. The regulation, the lawsuit explains, creates a massive new liability for thousands of health care professionals unless they, can unless they cast aside their medical judgment and perform controversial and even harmful medical transition procedures. Congress had refused to redefine the word and courts also had declined to make such a move. But the lawsuit explains that the Obama administration went ahead with it, basing non-discrimination requirements on a sense of gender, quote, a sense of gender, that could force healthcare professionals, quote, to violate their deeply held religious beliefs. The redefinition means a physician would not be allowed to use his or her own best judgment regarding the advisability of a sex change procedure, the lawsuit says, including on children. 
let me re-emphasize that I'm speaking about children. No doctor should be forced to perform a procedure that he or she believes will harm a child, said Beckett Fund Senior Counsel Lori Wyndham. Decisions on a child med child's medical treatment should be between families and their doctors, not dictated by politicians and government bureaucrats. The issue is addressed on a new website, HHS Transit Transgender Mandate. It explains the HHS rule mandates, quote, that doctors must perform gender transition procedures on any child referred by a mental health professional, even if the doctor believes the treatment or hormone therapy could harm the child. The mandate also requires virtually all private insurance companies and employers to cover gender transition procedures or face stiff penalties and legal action. To be clear, this is not a question of access to care, but of forcing a political ideology on doctors against their medical judgment. This mandate would be unique in requiring doctors to violate their Hippocratic Oath, the site explains. The complaint gets specific. Quote, the regulation undermines the long-standing sovereign power of the states to regulate health care, ensure appropriate standards of medical judgment, and protect its citizens' constitutional and civil rights. Under this rule, states are now required to force all health care professionals at state-run facilities to participate in medical transition procedures, including hormone therapy, plastic surgery, hysterectomies, and gender reassignment surgery, and to cover those procedures in the state's health insurance plan, even if a doctor believes such procedures are harmful to the patient. This case boils down to a very simple question of statutory interpretation. Can HHS redefine the term sex to thwart decades of settled precedent and impose massive new obligations on health care professionals and sovereign states? The answer is no. The complaint points out that almost all of children who exhibit behaviors such as a boy playing with dolls grow out of them. The new regulation applies to 900,000 doctors. Virtually every doctor in the U.S., many of whom have chosen the medical profession because they are inspired by their faith to serve those in need and to heal others, the legal term says. They have taken an oath to put the needs of each patient first and do no harm. But this regulation violates doctors' ability to exercise both their best medical judgment and their rigorously, or sorry, religiously inspired desire to care for a society's most vulnerable. It will also cost health care providers and taxpayers nearly $1 billion, the group says. Even though Congress included in the law an exemption for religious organizations, the rule states that anyone who objects, quote, could assert claims under existing statutory protection. And it does not provide any mechanism by which a religious entity could determine if it was entitled to any existing religious protections. The case asserts the Obama administration violated the Administrative Procedure Act, the First Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Tenth Amendment, and the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. The lawsuit asks for a ruling that the regulation is invalid and unconstitutional and seeks a permanent injunction preventing its use. WND reported Monday that a major new study from Johns Hopkins psychologists Lawrence Mayer and Paul McHugh warned against children being sub subjected to transgender treatment such as hormone therapy and surgery. Mayer is a scholar in residence in the Department of Psychiatry at Johns Hopkins University and a professor of statistics and biostatistics at Arizona State University. McHugh is a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and was for 25 years the psychiatrist in chief at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Children who express an identification with the opposite gender almost always leave those, those expressions behind as they grow, they argue. 
Despite the scientific uncertainty, drastic interventions are prescribed and delivered to patients identifying or identified as transgender. This is especially troubling when the patients receiving those interventions are children. The authors wrote in the study, quote, sexuality and gender findings from biological, psychological, and social sciences, sciences published in The New Atlantis. We read popular reports about plans for medical and surgical interventions for many prebubescent pre children, some as young as six, and other therapeutic approaches undertaken for children as young as two. We suggest that no one can determine the gender identity of a two-year-old. We have reservations about how well science scientists understand what it even means for a child to have de a developed a sense of his or her gender, but notwithstanding that issue, we are deeply alarmed that these therapies, treatments, and surgeries seem disproportionate to the severity of the distress being experienced by these young people and are, at any rate, premature, since the majority of children who identify as the gender opposite their biological sex will not continue to do so as adults. Moreover, there is a lack of reliable studies on the long-term effects of these interventions. We strongly urge caution in this regard. There's a video here on this website too, and that's the end of the article. Well, let me say this. I grew up in a neighborhood of all boys. We played with cars. We made ramps. We jumped our ramps with our bicycles. We roughhoused. We wrestled. We played. We played hard. Had I not had a neighborhood of kids that were all boys and someone to play with, I wouldn't have been able to play with anyone. And I don't identify myself as a male. It has nothing to do with that. And I'm so upset by this because these children are just being destroyed. And adults who feel that they are trapped in a body that is not theirs or a man who feels like he's trapped in a woman's body, that is a whole different scenario and thing than a child. There's so many factors that determine things for children, who they play with, who they grow up with, how, uh, how are they being treated by adults. I mean, this is not okay. And forcing these doctors, and to me it doesn't even have anything to do with religion. Um, a doctor is, is, not all doctors, but certainly some, um, are really in it for the right reasons and do want to do what's best for their patients. And, I, and I'm just mortified by this. I, I just can't even believe it, what we're doing um, to these kids. Um, it, it just really, really upsets me. So, again, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm speaking on behalf of children, and I am just really upset by this. I, I don't... These kids have... Talk about the war against drugs, the war against this. What about the war on kids? What about the war on children that is going on all over the world? And and I'm just, I'm so disgusted by this. Um, I hope everyone has a great day. And please, um, if you can, in, in any small way, please speak out on behalf of these kids. They have no voice of their own. It's up to us to, to try and help them. Have a great day, everyone.